Hi, it's Mike from Microsoft Box and Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a USB flashback on this motherboard. So this is the B650 Aorus Elite AX version 1.2. Now that is actually very important when you're doing these BOSS flashbacks because a lot of motherboards tend to have slightly different revisions. Make sure that you're selecting the correct BIOS for your motherboard, otherwise it basically won't work, which is actually a very common thing which we see on our Discord. Now, obviously, if you are getting to a point where you're really struggling with this, please feel free to join us on our Discord, it's free of charge, and uh, myself and also the other members give up our time free of charge to try and help you guys out, so uh, do be patient. We are in the UK, so time zones may differ, etc. but we will try and help you out if we can. Anyway, with all that out of the way, Let's go through and take a look at some of the things you're actually going to need to perform a USB BIOS flashback on this motherboard. So obviously the motherboard is going to be one of the things you're definitely going to need. You will also need a USB stick, ideally 32 gigabytes or smaller, because you will need to format it to the FAT32 file system. Also make sure that that drive is in the MBR format rather than GPT. I'll show you how to do that as we go through the video. You also need to have a power supply. Now people always ask, can I do the BOSS flashback with a fully populated system? Yes, you can. Most certainly you can do, but in terms of actually fault finding, if for some reason it won't flash, it is far easier to do it on a completely bare board before you start the build. But if you're already done and you've turned your PC on and you've got no display, then I would suggest at the bare minimum, remove something like the graphics card and the RAM, that sort of thing. Those are quite easy to remove. You can leave your CPU on the socket should you need to. Um, again, ideally, like I keep on saying, a bare board is the best way to go to rule out any kind of other things causing problems. So other things you're going to need is going to be a PC power supply. Now you don't need all of the connections, all you need is the 24 pin main power connection, which goes into the main 24 pin power connector. And also you'll need a 8 pin or 4 pin EPS connector, which goes into the top part of the board, which you're probably seeing for some B-roll we shot a little bit earlier. Something else you're definitely going to need is actually a working PC, unfortunately, to actually go to the Gigabyte website and download the BIOS, which we're going to do right now. Okay, so here we are on our Windows 11 desktop. Now, this is something which I don't always show in the videos, but I figured it's a good idea because people do ask the question. So you have to have the USB drive, FAT32 format, as we kind of know already, but you also have it to have it in the MBR format. So if you're not too sure if it's in MBR format or not, what you can do is open up an administrator command prompt and just type in disk part. And then you can do list disk. And this will show you. So disk one is our 32 gig drive. It shows up as 28 gig because of the formatted size. And this is the bit you want to pay attention to. So where it says GPT. So our main drive, our two terabyte system drive is a GPT or UFI type drive. Disk one has no mark there, so that means it's in the MBR format. If your drive has a little star there or asterisk saying that it is GPT, you can just do a clean drive. So you can do select disk one. So disk one is now the selected disk and you can just type in clean. So what that'll do is it'll just erase the drive in its entirety. Obviously, if you've got any data on there, then you want to uh, make sure that that is all sorted out and taken care of. The next thing you want to do is to go into disk management then find your new drive there, which is blank, which is unallocated. This is just an easier way of formatting, so you can right click, choose new simple volume, do next, next. Drive letter, you can assign whatever you want to, it's absolutely fine. And this is the important bit, so file system, currently is defaulting to NTFS, but we want FAT32. The allocation size, you can leave it as default, and if it's got a volume label, just remove that, it doesn't need it. And then it will perform a quick format, so you can click on next, and then finish, and there we go. There is our blank USB drive, which is now in the MBR format, ready for us to download the BIOS. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna do that by going over to the Gigabyte website for this particular board. And again, if you go into the site, go to the support tab, which will be listed here. Make sure that this is the right revision. So this is revision 1.2. If you're not too sure, take a look on your motherboard. It will be silk screen printed on there somewhere. Again, if you're not too sure, post a picture on our Discord and we'll point you in the right direction. So there's options for Rev 1, 1.1, and Rev 2, or 1.2, sorry. So we are in this one, that is selected. So let's go to the Support tab, and then we can scroll down and go to this section here for BIOS. 
and generally it's worth getting the latest version. So the latest one for us is February the 6th, 2024. This video has been recorded middle of March 2024. So that is the latest version. This also updates the motherboard to improve the 8000 series APU performance with Stampum disabled. Again, yours may say something differently. It's worth getting a new BIOS because they've lots of uh, vulnerabilities such as logo fail, which will be remedied. So try and get the latest BIOS for your board. So we can click on download. We'll save this to our Windows desktop. Now the file which is downloaded is actually a zipped file. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is to right click on that file, choose extract all. We'll extract it to the default location, which is the desktop. And there is our file. So as you can see, it's a 32 megabyte file or 32,000 kilobytes. And it's got a very bizarre file name, which our motherboard cannot recognize. So what we need to do is to actually rename this file. So we'll click on it twice, remove all of that. And we wanna type in gigabyte dot bin because it needs to be a bin file so when you're happy press enter it'll say here if you change the file name blah 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 yes we do so there is a file so we can right click on this now you can choose either cut or copy and then go to our usb drive right click choose paste or you can drag and drop it whatever you want to do so that is essentially it so now what we can do is with that drive we can eject the drive take it out of the system and we can now go over to our little test bench and flash the BIOS. Okay, so we've got our little test platform set up here. So we've got our motherboard, uh, we've got the main 24 pin power connected, and also we've got our EPS connection connected at the top there. Power supply is here in the off position, ready for us to go. We've got a USB drive, so you wanna put it into the BIOS flashback port. On this particular board, if you look at the ethernet, it's the bottom one, the red one there, so plug it into there. It's not that obvious it could be either one the one next to it or this one but that is the right one so when you're ready turn on the power so we've got some power you'll get a brief flash on the motherboard just so that there's a, some illumination the next thing to do is to locate your boss flashback button now on this board it's in this top corner here so just press and hold the button for about two or three seconds and you should start seeing some life spring into the system potentially your power supply fan might spin depending on your power supply some have zero db or zero rpm if they're not drawing a lot of power which clearly we're not going to be so let's go ahead and we'll press that in hold it in for a few seconds and already we've got a led on the motherboard there so we'll just wait and we're waiting to see the boss flashback led there start flashing which hopefully you can just about make out. It's flashing fast at the moment. If you get to the point where you put it in, it flashes a few times then stops, that means the system cannot read your USB drive or potentially you have the wrong BOSS file on the USB drive. Potentially it could be from other things. So if you've got RAM in there, which is possibly faulty or some other component connected to the system, which is causing some kind of short or is not correctly wired, that can also prevent the BIOS from flashing. So that is why we do say, ideally you wanna try and do this on a bare board because that way you're ruling out any other potential issues for the BIOS not being able to flash. So with that said, we're still flashing away. The flashing speed appears to have changed a little bit. So the thing is, just leave it, let it go on, do its thing. And uh, it should take around about three to five minutes depending on the speed of your USB drive and the system, which point the system should shut down do a restart and then it'll come back up. Your diagnostic LED next to the RAM will probably be lit saying CPU because there isn't a CPU on there. Don't worry too much about that. The more important thing is to keep an eye on the flashing there and to hopefully it go through the cycles. If you want to set your watch, set a timer for around about five minutes. If it goes on too much longer than that, then I would turn it off and try again and obviously do check the files on your BIOS drive. Make sure that it's all correct and you've got the right BIOS provision for your motherboard. This particular one, the BOSS revision is written in the bottom left-hand corner, but it does say there, revision 1.2. So anyway, we're gonna let this do, and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, so there was a audible click from the power supply, and the power supply has turned off, and the system has shut down, which is actually sometimes unusual. Sometimes it will reboot itself after, but it does appear to have shut down, so that is effectively it. Our BIOS is now flashed. Okay, so there we go, it's all done. System shut down, so that is good. Sometimes these boards, when you do it, they just reboot and then you kind of like wonder what you need to do. So at this point now, the board is shut down, so turn off the power supply. You can remove your USB drive. At this point, if you want to, you can install your processor, your RAM, 
and just do a basic test just to make sure that it posts or you can carry on and just uh, be brave and do the whole build and see how it goes like I said, if you get any problems, feel free to join us on our Discord. Links for that will be in the video description. They're in the bottom of every video we do anyway, so if you want to join us, you're more than welcome to do so. But hopefully this video has helped you out. Now, I do know that some of these videos, I do go on, I do labour certain points, and people often say, Mike, this is like a two-minute task. Why is it a 15-minute video? Now, the reason is because I've learned a lot over the years and also from the feedback from viewers and some people learn at different rates, so you need to know things a little bit more hand-holding. So for those of you that are a little bit more educated on these matters and find it very easy and pick up things quite naturally, then I apologise for the video being so long. But for those of you that uh, are still even struggling with the videos as they are because it just doesn't make sense to you, then hopefully this is a little bit clearer and will help you on its way. But again, if you get any problems, our Discord is where you want to head to. So that's going to wrap this video up. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews on How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.